Well, I want to thank everybody for coming to Open Talk. Uh, we have a great guest today, uh, a friend, um, an amazing photographer, an educator, a fashion photographer, and someone that's energy really kind of exemplifies what it is to be uh, part of this community and giving back. Uh, I want to introduce uh, Miguel Quiles. Miguel, thank you for joining us today. How are you? Doing okay. Thank you for having me. Really, it's, really excited to be here. It's such a pleasure. It's such a pleasure. So you recently relocated. You're no longer in New York. Where are you, where are you right now? Yeah, so uh, I am uh, in the number one state for COVID-19. <laughs> you went from one Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I might be chasing you or something. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I, I, I thought I escaped it. You know, I moved like uh, first week of March. That was when, you know, the whole coronavirus stuff really started to heat up. And then uh, Florida was pretty quiet for the most part. And then all of a sudden in the last few weeks, they've reopened everything and, and the numbers have just been going crazy. So yeah. uh, I'm in Orlando, Florida now. And uh, we're, not, we're not number one in Orlando, but I am in the state that's number one. So yeah. it's, it's what, crazy. What made you uh, kind of move down to Florida from New York? Um, it was kind of a bunch of different things. Really, the, the first one being that my mom is getting older. Uh, she's going to be, she just turned 79 in May. And so uh, it's just getting to the point now to where she really needs to have somebody locally that can, you know, help her to go to doctor's appointments and whatever else. Um, couldn't really do that effectively from, from New Jersey. So uh, that was one part of it. The other part was I have a two-year-old and all of our family is here in Florida and they're all here in Orlando. And so uh, a lot of the work that I do, and this kind of takes me into the third thing, uh, I travel a lot for work. I mean, prior to COVID, I, I traveled a ton. And so just kind of got to the point to where I said, you know, I could continue to live here on an island in New Jersey, far away from everyone. Or I could just move closer, be like back in Orlando, and I could still do all the same stuff that I've been doing um, and just uh, try to make it work. And so that's, that's kind of where I'm at today. So let's dive back in. Let's kind of rewind time. And you talked about your mom. Where, where, were, you, where were you born? I was born in uh, Connecticut. And so... Uh, Lived the first uh, few years of my life in Connecticut, um, then moved down to Tampa, Florida, lived there for a few years. My, my father opened up a, uh, a restaurant business there, uh, didn't really work out, moved back up north to Stamford, Connecticut, lived there for a few years, finally moved back down to Orlando. And that's kind of where I lived from uh, the time I was eight years old up until I want to say about eight years ago uh, when I moved to New Jersey. So yeah, it's so you said uh, your, your father was in the restaurant business. Did he do other things during your, your youth or and, and what, what did your mom do? Yeah, um, I mean, he's always been kind of an entrepreneur at heart. Uh, so for the most part, he's had all kinds of different businesses, uh, food truck business. Um, you know, he had a restaurant, had a gas station at one point, um, but was never really great with money. So, you know, it's just kind of like he'd get tired of doing one thing and go into another. Um, my mom always worked in, in uh, hospitality. So she's worked in hotels and things like that. Um, they, they worked together for a period of time before he passed away uh, back when I was uh, 10 or 11 years old. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, my mom really worked in hospitality uh, up until she retired a few years ago. And, uh, and it was great. You know, it, it was what great was for the, me. What was the family dynamic about were strict parents kind of loose, uh, you know, or were they kind of liberal, or, you know, yeah. conservative? Yeah, definitely on the liberal side. Uh, I remember as a kid growing up, um, you know, I was very young and I remember having conversations with some of my friends and they would ask me, like they're talking about uh, politics and religion, right? So it's like, well, what are you? And I'm like six or seven years old. I'm like, I don't know. What, what do you mean? Oh, well, are you, uh, are you uh, agnostic or, you know, are you Catholic or what are you? And I'm like, I don't even know what any of that means. <laughs> so like I go home, Hey mom, what's our religion? <laughs> oh, we're Catholic. I'm like, okay, cool. So I go back to school and conversation picks up. Oh yeah, I'm Catholic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what that means, but my mom said, that's what I am. So whatever. And same thing with politics. You know, I, I come home one day and I'm like, oh, mom, now they're talking about politics. I don't know what I am. Oh, you're a Democrat. I'm like, oh, okay. I don't know what it means, but cool. You know, <laughs> and went to school. Hey, I'm a Democrat, you know, and, and took me many years um, growing up, just, just really wanting to understand why it is that I'm saying the things that I say, like, I, I have to be able to back these things up and I need to understand what it is. So I spent a lot of time, you know, researching, uh, uh, politics and religion, you know, as uh, in my formative years. And um, yeah, so it was, it was, uh, it was a pretty crazy trip. 
I think <laughs> my, my parents were extremely liberal in that way. And they're like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm like, you know, I think I came home at 13 uh, one day and I, I saw my, you know, like some of my Jewish friends that were all having these um, bar mitzvahs and stuff like that. And I'd see the, 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 the check drop and all these gifts. I'm like, dad, I don't want to be Jewish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. You just kind of go with whatever they tell you, you know, and and I remember my dad going, you can study any religion you want, but you have to study it. And then you, you can choose what you want to be. But, uh, you know, that's I, cool that he told you that because my, my mom was not so gracious. <laughs> I mean, she definitely was like very, um, uh, very offended, I guess is the only word I could come up with when. Uh, Where are the roots of your family from? Um, they're all Puerto Rican. So like all my family is from Puerto Rico. Um, so I think maybe that's where a lot of the, uh, you know, that upbringing comes from. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, even though my dad, you know, had some money, you know, to be able to come here and, and open up these different businesses, um, you know, he, he was always kind of at a disadvantage because he never finished high school. Um, my mom never finished high school. Uh, and so growing up, you know, I didn't really realize because I hadn't finished high school either up to that point. Like I was a little kid and I, I didn't understand at the time what that meant, you know, to, to a person to not graduate and and kind of move on into higher education and so um yeah it just made things kind of uh kind of crazy and then i kind of understood why they held the the beliefs that they held you know they uh they didn't have that upbringing they didn't have um you know that level of education and uh i'm, I'm just kind of happy that you know i came up in a time where the availability of information was so abundant that you know, if I wanted to go down that road, I could just continue to just think the way they wanted me to think. Uh, or I could educate myself and try to figure things out for myself. And if I land in the same place, I land in the same place. But if not, you know, at least I have uh, a rationale for backing it up other than somebody just telling me, hey, this is what you need to believe. All right. So next question. Uh, wh where did you go to high school? Uh, so I, I went to high school here in Orlando, Florida. I actually uh, graduated high school from a, a place like 20 minutes away from where I'm at now. And uh, so graduated in the late nineties and um, uh, went to community college for a very long time. You know, it's only <laughs> supposed to be like a two year thing. And, and I went for way longer than that, but I uh, was pretty happy that I finally got my two year degree and uh, well, it, high school and community college were you a good student where you find yourself kind of wandering, just, just no idea and didn't kind of connect with anything. No, 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 no. Terrible student. Yeah. Like, terrible student. And, and it's very funny because, uh, you know, I, I could kind of look back now and, and just be very honest with myself that I was an intelligent guy. And I, I, I really, what ended up happening was I didn't have the motivation to want to like be a good student. Yeah. Um, so I skipped school a lot. You know, I, I graduated on time. I was thankful for that, but I graduated with like the lowest possible GPA that you could possibly have. And part of that was that like, I didn't apply myself, you know, I wasn't in school all the time and, and I would skip and have fun with my friends. And uh, unfortunately I was in a group that, um, that, that was okay for them. You know, I, yeah. I surrounded what kind of, myself. What kind of social click did you gravitate to? Like in the high school movies, what gamers. would it be? Gamers, <laughs> man, gamers. Uh, you know, this was back in the early days of, uh, of, of being able to play online. And so, uh, I used to play online on this system called X band. It was a super Nintendo online network, God. uh, where you could play games like street fighter and mortal yeah. Kombat and Mario Kart and all this stuff. So, uh, a lot of my friends, really good friends that, um, that I made at that time, all basically were, were gamers as well. So, you know, we'd skip school, we'd play video games all the time, go to arcades when that was a thing. Um, and, and yeah, f photography and things like that was very far away from my mind that was not even it wasn't even a thing like if I had the option to go and buy a camera or go buy a video game 10 times out of 10 I would buy a video game like there was no you know <laughs> what were the no other influences at the time were you just full into gaming or was it you know uh, binge watching tv or movies or, or, or music what watching kung, kung fu movies yeah. watching anime yep um you know uh what watching and playing basketball at the time you know, I thought for a, a short period of time that I would maybe become like a professional athlete. Um, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, all of those things require uh, good grades if you're going to compete in high school and uh, just require some determination that, you know, at the time had not developed. Yeah. You know, I didn't have a, a group of people around me that 
were doing those types of things. And so it was very easy for me to just fall into this uh, groove of just being, you know, for lack of better words, just being a loser. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So you're leaving high school and going to community college. What are you going to study? I'm going, is there an interest yet? Or are you just kind of just, I have to continue educating? Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think business was kind of the big, um, the big goal in my mind was to get a, a degree in business because I felt like that was going to be the most versatile degree for, for whatever I wanted to do. Um, but, uh, so, you know, but at the time I was just taking, you know, general education classes and stuff. Um, I, again, I didn't really know how college worked. So I was like looking <laughs> at the brochure and I remember seeing, Oh, they have Kabuto. I'm definitely taking that class. <laughs> Does it have anything to do with a business degree? Probably not, but Kabuto is badass. So I'm doing that, you know? So I took a bunch of courses that really um, didn't have much to do with what I thought I would do. It was yeah. just like fun. Um, yeah. And, and also uh, took courses in real estate because at the time I was thinking that I would become a realtor and uh, get into real estate sales. And um, so I kind of pushed down that uh, corridor of, of, of college and um yeah, that's, that's are you kind of already working at this time during college, pre-college? What was your first? Yeah. Job? Yeah. First job was uh, I was working at a place called Dockside Imports. Um, it was a if you've ever been to like Pier One, yeah. which I guess is closing as well. Yeah, um, heard, it's yeah. kind of like that. They, they sell uh, wicker furniture, rugs, uh, little tchotchkes and stuff you can buy for the home, fake flowers, you know, things of that nature. Yeah. Um, here in Orlando, they were really big. They had a bunch of locations, big stores. My mom used to uh, shop at one all the time and she knew the manager. And so uh, she tells the manager, hey, my son's looking for a job. And I think I was maybe 16 at the time. Like I was just old enough to start working. Yep. And, you know, because they had such a great relationship because she bought there all the time. He's like, oh, if he wants a job, tell him to come over. I'll, I'll hire him. And sure enough, I I came in and he gave me my first uh, job while I was still in, in high school. I think it was a junior in high school. And uh, he put me in uh, sales and, and kind of being a stalker. And uh, yeah, that was my first, first job. So your first, your first time, you know, getting in money and you said your father wasn't the best with, with money. Are you at yeah. this point blowing money on games and just going out with your friends? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And not just on games because now I have a brand new passion at this point in life, which is uh, cars. Cause now I can drive. And uh, so I started saving money, um, you know, buying audio equipment and led lights and stupid stuff, yeah. you know, and that, that honestly uh, was for way too many years. Cause I mean, that was from high school up until maybe like mid 2000, like 2005 when it finally started to be like, okay, yeah, this is kind of stupid to spend, you know, this much money on something that uh, really brings no, no real value. Uh, uh, no lasting value. So, so at this point, has, has photography even come into your head yet? Um, it, it did to some extent. So what ended up happening was, um, you know, kind of fast forward to 2000. So that first job was somewhere around like 96, 97, um, right around the year 2000. So I started working at um, what later became GameStop. Yeah. Uh, it, at the time it was called Babbage's and there was a software, I think it was called software, et cetera. And Babbage's basically merged. And when they merged together, they came up with GameStop. So um, I was a third key manager at a GameStop at a very, very busy popular mall in Orlando, Florida. And, and I thought I made it, man. I was like, <laughs> I'm a third key manager. It's like right underneath an assistant manager. Like I've made it, you know? And um and as I'm working there, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm around video games. I'm a happy guy. Like I get discounts on them. Uh, but they were, they were like terrible. I mean, they, the way that they treated their employees was terrible. Yeah. Um, the hours and the things that I was asked to do while I was working was just not what I was expecting. Um, and so there's a store that was right across from the store that, uh, that I was working at and they had like kind of a, mix of electronics you know they had tvs they had um you know uh, portable dvd players you know things of that nature and they also sold cameras and so the manager uh continually came to my my store and he's like scouting me you know he's like hey i, I want you to come over and work you know and 
And uh, I see that you're working really hard and you're not, you're probably not making any money. Like come work over here. You'll make real money. And yeah, he's just pestering me is the only way to put it. And, and finally it just got to the point to where uh, things weren't going well with GameStop at the time. And he hit me again, you know, Hey, I want you to come and work for me. Let me show you what we're doing and uh, show me some of the commissions that some of the people that work there were making. And I was like, well, all right, you got me, you know, I'm in. And so I uh, started working at this camera store. And as you might ima imagine, for somebody who didn't know anything about photography, trying to sell, you know, film cameras at the time, trying to sell lenses, trying to sell camcorders, I had no idea what the heck I was talking about. And, you know, it doesn't take but a minute or two for a photographer to talk to me at the time and figure out, oh, yeah, this guy doesn't know anything about cameras. Let me go to another store. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I kind of took it as a... Um, you know, uh, as a career opportunity for me to learn about photography because it's what I was doing. I, I was trying to sell cameras and trying to sell lenses and accessories. And so, um, so I bought my first camera and I started going to these car shows like I had been going and photographing models at the shows and photographing cars and photographing friends' cars and uh, just documenting life uh, with my, my uh, camera at the time. And um, that's that kind of started this whole like bug you know it, it kind of just got me started with photography and, and enjoying it and uh that was kind of in its early infancy early times of digital photography and that was starting right. to become a thing and uh as that came what was, about what was it got the very more first camera that you you remember actually owning and shooting on um the first one that i owned was a uh it was a canon something i want to say it was a um Hmm. I can't remember the model. Um, this would have been like a early it was a 2000. DSLR interchangeable lens. It was, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was a DSLR or it was a SLR. And so, um, and, and yeah, and I think I have like a Tamron lens of some sort. Um, cause back then we sold Tamron Sigma and Quantaray were the three brands. And so, um, you know, and then of course like the name brand stuff. So we sold yeah. Canon and Minolta and all that. Uh, so Canon at the time was my, my first uh, SLR camera. And then I owned a bunch of digital cameras. Uh, at the time I was big into Olympus. So like I had a bunch of uh, Olympus uh, little pocket cameras that I would take yeah. with me on like dates and stuff and just, <laughs> you know, or with friends and I'd photograph stuff with that because um, it was quick and easy, you know, versus the SLR. Like I would take that out for serious stuff. Like if I was go into a car show and I wanted to take really good pictures, I would bring my SLR. But so how did it kind of grow this? Uh, were you diving deep into it once you got a, a camera or was it kind of slow or were you just kind of reading everything? Were you starting to study? Where, where was the, the growth and that passion uh, that you're like, wow, I really, really kind of love shooting on a camera. Yeah. Um, so the store, the way it was set up was really cool because we had access to every camera that we sold. We had one on display and then we had all the rest of them in the back in a warehouse. So what I would end up doing is I would take every single camera, take it out of the box, see what's inside of the box, um, turn on the cameras, play with the menus, figure out exactly how they work. Because the last thing you want to do is to have a customer come in and say, hey, I want to see that specific camera and you not know anything yeah. about how it works. Yeah. So I, I quickly became the subject matter expert when it came to digital photography in the store because I, I literally ripped open every single camera the moment it came in. I would open it up, start digging through menus. And I felt like just doing that gave me a leg up over a lot of other people at the time, because most of the time you go to buy a camera and, and they would never go into that level of detail with you to even open up menus and say, Hey, let me show you this. You want to make sure you turn this on. Um, and, and so that, that's what kind of got me excited was the fact that like I was getting decent at it, you know, to some level, like I was yep. getting kind of decent at it and understanding how it all comes together. And, at this point, are you more kind of concerned in the tech because of your, the sales of it and, and not quite 100%. really kind of going to the, the composition and how to light and stuff like that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, those resources weren't really uh, as as readily available as they are today. And to be honest, it wasn't even a blip in my mind. Yeah. Like, I always felt like uh, photography was very technical. Like, it was more even the creative things that people would attribute to just being creative, like, to me, was a technical thing. You know, and so um, uh, that might be different these days, but yeah. at the time that was kind of how my brain was wired because I was just figuring things out as I kind of went along.
So you're at the camera store, you're shooting, uh, you know, you have a bunch of different cameras, you're shooting car shows and stuff like that. What's the next mm -hmm. uh, move and evolution of the photography? Yeah. Uh, so the, the next evolution was to just get out of it altogether. Uh, it's it's kind of crazy. I, yeah. I walked away from that camera store uh, right around 2002 and uh, started working. I started my own biz, uh, business at the time and um, started a second business to run alongside. So I had an electronics business selling uh, stuff online. And then I had a car performance business that was also online. So I had a company called Alpha Electronics. And then I had a uh, company called Remix Tuning that would sell car performance parts. And in my mind, I thought to myself, you know, as I'm doing all these other things, if I can get one of these two businesses to, to just pick up and run, that's what I was going to be. I was just going to be an online merchant, you know? Yeah, and, you, really, uh, you really adopted this, you know, this influence from your father about, you know, trying different businesses. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's in the blood, different stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was in the blood, but I, I felt like, um, you know, maybe a little bit of um, bravado, I guess. I don't know, but I just kind of looked at it like, well, I'm smarter than when he passed away and I was very young. Uh, but I, I felt smarter than he did. And I felt like where he failed, I would not. Right. And, and that was very naive of me because uh, being in business for yourself is, is very, very challenging. Uh, it's not what people glamorize it to be, you know, is the only way to put it. But, um, but I did that for, for several years and uh, it really wasn't until I decided to basically leave my full-time job back in 2011. Um, and that's when I really started to like look at my camera seriously and say, okay, I'm going to take all of this experience that I've had over the course of my life and I'm going to pour it into something that I have no idea about. And that's running a photography business. And, uh, and that's, that's what I did. And here we are today. So what are the first steps in, in, in kind of making that evolution? And what, what was the first you know, evolution of that photography business? Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, at the time, I, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, I didn't know if I wanted to photograph families. I didn't know if I wanted to, uh, you know, be a fashion photographer. I didn't know. I didn't know what any of that meant. Yeah. You know, I didn't know what any of these things meant to be a specific type of photographer, you know. And, and so I just knew that. Uh, whatever it was that I wanted to be able to utilize the skills that I've learned up to that point in life uh, and, and try to make as much money to where, you know, I could support myself and, and support my family. And that's kind of the singular, you know, mindset that I had going into it. And so uh, at, at that point in time, I realized I like working with people. Uh, having had a sales and, and service background, I figured that's where I would thrive the most. Uh, but of course, working with people, you could do that a bunch of different ways. Yeah. You know, you could do it uh, photographing families, maternity, kids, uh, you know, just weddings, which which I did. Like I basically photographed everything starting out, trying to figure out where did I fit, you know, in you this think your first steps into photography more like you were thinking about this is going to be a business and you weren't thinking of it more of an art form. I mean, that for sure later and, you know. So what For were sure. your influences going into it? Did you have influences or were you just, no, this is a business? Do you, were you, you know, looking at other photographers at this point or no, it's just like, oh, I saw something I liked. Were you even conscious of that at that point? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so it, it was kind of interesting. I, it definitely was always, uh, I always looked at it as a career and as a business. Um, you know, the idea of a starving photographer to me is, is a caricature that is not cool. Um, it's not something that I would ever be proud to yep. say. And I feel like there's a lot of artists that they're very proud to say that they're like, Oh yes, I'm a starving artist. That's not cool, man. It's not cool <laughs> to be a starving artist artist. What you do provides value to people. And, and if you provide value of some sort to a person or a group, you deserve to be paid for that. And so, um, so when I started, it was all about the fact of, of being able to be in business and make money and, and support family and to do it in a way that would be fun, you know, yeah. to do it in a way that, and, and to me, like the creative side of things is fun, you know? And, and so, um, yeah. So I, when I started out, that was really it. And I looked at photographers that uh, were out there, you know, some which were teaching what they did and some of them that I just looked at in magazines and, and admired their work, yeah. um, you know, and always wondered how the heck did they do that? You know, and I would see their pictures and, and that just kind of drove me, but that 
uh, security net for me was knowing that once I learned these different things that I could make a living. And, um, you know, if it wasn't for that, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have pursued it. At this point and, and throughout the, your life, I mean, knowing you now, yeah, part of one of the reasons I admire you so much and, and, and kind of watch, you know, watch what you're doing as a friend and as a colleague and as someone in this industry giving back to the community is you really work tirelessly. I mean, your work ethic is go, 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 go. Early on, did you have that worth ethic or is this something you realized I just have to do to build my business or where were you at at the beginning stages of the photography? Absolutely. Um, and thank you for that. You know, I, I, um, you know, I, I always had that work ethic mainly because of the fact that I identified early on in my career that if you wanted to stand apart from your coworkers, you just have to work just a tiny bit harder, you know? And uh, it started to get to the point to where everywhere that I worked, I was what many would call like a kiss ass at work, you know, because I would come into work and I busted my ass every single day. I wanted to work hard. I wanted to do well. I wanted to be um, recognized as being somebody who Isn't is funny really good at what they do. Just doing something kind of proper. Like, you know, when I was raised by, you know, like if I, if I, was in front of anybody. I said, yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, yes. Ma no, ma'am. I was taught to sit in the front of the class to be early to, you know, it's like, right. And you were teased for doing things that were proper. Like I was literally sure. teased, like, Oh, that's the kid that says, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. And it's like, Oh, <laughs> it's like, it's like, Oh man, I'm like feeling terrible for trying to be a proper, you know? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Dude, but that's not even, you're, you're talking about like, as you were younger, imagine this, I was playing call of duty, uh, probably a couple years ago. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm on fire in this match. I think I was at like 20 kills straight, zero deaths. And I'm just like lighting everyone up. And some kid was just trash talking over the headset. And, uh, cause I kept getting him. He kept camping in the same spot on the map and I kept finding him. I probably got him like eight or nine times cause he keeps going to the same place. I'm like, are you stupid? I know where you are. Um, so, so he goes, oh man, you're a try hard. And, and I'm just like, uh, what do you mean a try hard? You're, like, you're a try hard. You know, you just, you trying to get 30 and oh, like you're a loser. You're a try hard. And I'm like, but, but you're losing. What you're are you a loser for being successful right now? <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you talking about? I, I'm a try hard. Yes, I'm a try hard. Like, I play to win. Like, and what, now what I are you try doing? harder. <laughs> yeah. Like, you need to try harder, you know? So, like, it was just funny how it became this, like, you know, I guess like a pejorative, like they, they try to make it into something negative. And it's like, no, dude, like work hard and, and good things will, will come from that. Yeah. And uh, so when I started my career, I knew I was at a disadvantage because there were people that had been, you know, they grew up with a camera in their hand since they were 10 years old, you know, and, and I wasn't that guy. I'm, yeah. you know, now in my, my twenties trying to you know, figure this whole thing out. And so I knew that if I was going to become successful, that I had to work 10, 15, 20 times harder to well, imagine that discovering gap. that in your forties, like I did. <laughs> See? That's it was what my I'm saying. Third, third reboot of a career, you know, and wow. I, I'm like playing with, uh, you know, 20 year olds and people that have had, you know, careers and the same thing. It's like, a, I force myself every single day, like you do, like, I, I can't like sit back. I have to watch the next YouTube video. I have to watch the next mm -hmm. thing. I have to try the next deal you know, lighting setup. I have to push myself every single day to learn something new. It's like, I always feel like I'm trying to catch up. And, and, uh, that's why I always see in the span of period, like I, I think I met you maybe four or five years ago, uh, mm -hmm. at this point now and in that span i've seen how much you've pushed yourself in that short period of time and and, and we'll actually we're going to go into some of that oh, yeah. in a moment but uh, uh do you remember what the first paid job you had was um yeah i think uh it must have been like a headshot session uh, i had a friend who uh was a really good friend of mine in high school and uh, she worked for a she was in like a marketing position uh yeah. with a big hospital chain here in Florida. And so uh, she was like, yeah, you know, these doctors need to get some new headshots. And uh, you completely panicked going in the day before. No, like, I don't know what I'm doing. No. Or you went in with such confidence. And I, and, and you know what, now looking back, the pictures were terrible. So I probably should have been more nervous, <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, I went into it like, Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm going to be able to go and, and make some money. This is great. Let's go. Let's run. Um, but yeah, um, I never really had that, that, negative talk in my head at the time, yeah. uh, just because I didn't know to have that, you know, I, I kind of always went into this kind of very naive, like, Oh yeah, I got this. Let's go. Let's, let's not. Has that out. changed Do you now? Like you, know, when you're on bigger jobs now, do oh, you sure. nerves the time before, like it's completely different now. 
Absolutely. I, I think okay. what ends up happening, and I learned this back when I did sales, um, the more that you know, it, it almost hinders you to some extent because now you're drawing on this like database of knowledge where you're like, things will conflict. Yeah. Situations arise where you're like, well, I did it this way this one time, but this other time I did it and it worked out better. But this way is kind of, and you start having this whole internal dialogue and things just go crazy. Um, you know, it, it reminds me of this story. I used to, when I worked at that camera store, um, they uh, had hired a uh, woman to work there. And, uh, and she was great. You know, she came in, she didn't know anything about cameras, but, uh, my coworkers were like, Oh, you know, she's going to clean the floor with you. Like she's going to be so good. Cause I was one of the top salespeople there. And they were like saying, basically she was going to threaten my, my reign as a, uh, as the top salesperson, because number one, she was beautiful. Um, she was a good talker, uh, way better talker than I was, yeah. you know? And, and, um, and so that first month, she went in there and she lit me up. Like her sales were like crazy that first month. And, uh, and, and I was confident the whole time. I'm like, hey, that's cool. It's gonna happen. And I didn't know why I was so confident, but I knew that over the course of 30, 60, 90, you know, 120 days that things were gonna change. Yeah. And sure enough, they did. And what I realized early on was that when you don't know very much about something, you can approach it with this like almost childlike mentality that like, Oh, there's nothing. I'm, I'm invincible. I can do anything. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and that's kind of what happened. You know, she came in, she didn't really know very much about stuff, but she relied on the fact that she could talk really well. Um, and that, you know, she was pretty and, and I didn't blame her. I'm like, man, I wish, <laughs> wish I had that going for me, you know, yeah. I do better. But um, over the course of time, as she learned more, I started to see those numbers go down and go down. And then now this gap started to close and she became just like the rest of us that were yeah. enlightened, you know, and now having to have these debates and battles to where before she would react quickly and say, yes, this is the camera that you need because it's the only camera that she knows about, right? Like it's the only one that she read about. And yep. once you start learning about a bunch of other stuff, you're like, well, this one would be good, but also this one and this other one actually could be good too. And next thing you know, the person's like, well, you gave me a lot to think about. I'm out. It's true. And what you bring up is such a good point is like, uh, the more we learn, the more it kind of gets in our head. And when I'm sometimes when I'm teaching or giving lectures or talking about photography, I talk about the sort of bliss of ignorance when you're first starting out. And you know, you just have this one circle of freedom. It's like, I want to shoot what I like. That looks pretty. Right. I'm going to put the camera there. And there's this total artistic freedom. And then when you start really kind of understanding a camera and the dialogue of it and the, you know, the mechanics and the language of, of the camera, suddenly you're frozen. Like that creativity gets zapped out because you think, well, do I use this shutter or this shutter speed or what aperture do I do? Or how do I do both? Or how do I? It's like suddenly this. These, you now have a second circle. They're totally out of joint. Like, like sure. I, I don't know where to yep. put them back together. And then, and once you master your camera and the settings and understand that, you kind of forget about that circle and you can start focusing on the creative circle. And they sync up again and they start going. But it takes a long time to get to that point if it ever does get back to that point. And I, you know, that whole knowledge thing is is crazy. So now that you've gone from you know building your own business. What are the first things that are happening in your career? Where is it, where is it going at this point? Where, what age are you now that you have your, your business and what year is it in, and uh, what is the next evolution of, of, of your photography career? Yeah, so uh, let's see, I was probably, so this was 2011, 2012, about eight years ago. So I was already in my thirties, like I just turned maybe 30, 31 years old. Um, you know, I felt like looking back in time, you know, if I would have thought to myself, when you were 15, where did you think you would be when you're 30? And at the time I was like, oh, I would have had life figured it out, figured out. I'd have business figured out. I know exactly what I was going to do. And I'd probably be in the midst of doing it. And instead I kind of found, my, found myself at the doorstep of a new career and, and a career that I had no training in, yeah. you know, a career that uh, was very unlikely. I mean, I told people at the time, yeah, you know, I'm going to be a photographer. And they're like, what? <laughs> like, are, are you, mad like why would you do that you they almost looked at it like if i would have told them i was going to go work at mcdonald's flipping burgers they're just like do you need a job like i'll help you out man you're gonna be a photographer and do so your parents do your parents are are they on board and kind of just like anything you want to do or are they oh, how are they with the whole photography i mean at the time my mom she uh she was so busy throughout the majority of my teenage years that whatever i wanted to do she was like go for it um she wasn't 
she didn't participate in it, right? Um, but yeah, she she really honestly in the beginning I didn't get that much support. Generally, like broadly speaking, I didn't have that much support. I had a couple of friends at the time who, um, uh, one of which was a photographer at the time, um, who was really kind of encouraging me. Uh, and he's, we'll see some of his pictures in a little bit. Um, and then another friend that I work with who was in the creative arts, he was a rapper, a poet, uh, did a bunch of different things. And, um, you know, he encouraged me and helped me and modeled for me when I was trying to figure things out. Um, but, you know, I had very little support, you know, in a broad sense in the yeah. grand scheme of things. But at the same time, I also knew that I could make this happen regardless of their you know, support or regardless of uh, their distractions. You know, honestly, most, most of the times when people don't understand what you're doing uh, and they don't understand your goals, they're always going to try to dissuade you. They're going to ask you to do something else that maybe is more comfortable for them, you know? And, and so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I read a ton at the time to try to keep my mind right. And, uh, and I'm happy I did, you know, cause I was able to stick, stick the course. I think this is a good point to jump into some of your photography. And uh, so mm -hmm. I'm going to bring up right here and we can start talking about the first one that I'm bringing up here. Why don't you, why don't you talk, tell me about this? Yeah. So uh, if you remember, I was telling you about my friend. Um, so this is David. Uh, we, we worked together at the time at Sprint and uh, we uh, used to do some different projects for, um, for Sprint where I would train the salespeople on uh, phones and tablets and specifically how to sell those devices to business people because uh, at, the, at the time I had great success doing it. And David was one of my uh, coworkers who basically uh, made the opportunity for me to make these little training videos and stuff. And so uh, he had a Canon DSLR of some sort. <clears throat> um, and uh, so, you know, he kind of encouraged me to, to get started in the business. So those photos that you saw were the very first photos that I took with a strobe. And so I literally called him and said, hey, I have these uh, alien bees coming today. I ordered three of them because I watched a YouTube video and the pictures came out beautiful with three strobes. So uh, come over to my house. We're going to figure this thing out. And so uh, the first photo that I have ever taken with a strobe is that top left photo. Um, you know, wasn't even trying to compose things properly. I don't even know if I had a modifier on that thing. <laughs> Um, so question here, uh, yeah. it seems that very early on you're, you have always been wanting to kind of demonstrate and educate and help. Has this been something throughout your life that you, you like giving back and kind of helping people and, and, and teaching people because, and, and at this point, are you already doing YouTube? Because I mean, that's a big part of who you are as well. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've, I've always kind of had that, um, desire to want to learn things to the point to where I could explain it to other people and that they could learn and, and do it in their own way. Um, it was always like that pretty much everywhere that I've worked, I've always wanted to be that, you know, what I call the subject matter expert uh, when it comes to whatever it was that I was doing. And so uh, certain jobs allowed me the opportunity to be able to kind of take that to a different level. You know, like when I worked at um, Sprint with, with David, uh, I had the opportunity to create training videos and, and do all these things that were, um, you know, not so much of a hobby nature. It was actually like there was a business purpose for it and they, they wanted, me, wanted me to do that. Um, so, and as I've learned in photography, you know, I kind of said to myself that I wanted to be the resource that I wish I would have had when I started. And um, I didn't know if I could ever get to that point of, understanding in photography that I could ever teach myself something. But, uh, but that was the road that I went down and I didn't know what it was going to look like, but here, here we are today, you know, and I'm still trying to figure out what it looks <laughs> do you like. Get, I mean, do you, do you, you do it because you enjoy it and like, it, sure. is it something that you truly, because I mean, it, obviously it's a great marketing thing. It great gets people attention on you. And I think you understand which, which is great is that you actually did start in business and a right. lot of photographers start at, you know, as being a photographer and they have no clue. They can be so talented and someone that ha understands business and can be a f maybe a fraction less talented is going to do, better things will be more successful because they understand marketing and business. And, and to, so your merging of that, how do you think that plays a, a factor in your career and growing as a photographer? 
Well, I, I mean, I think it's, it's everything, you know, I think it's everything. Um, you know, I, I, I did it because I enjoyed it and I enjoy seeing people succeed in general. I feel like, um, <clears throat> you know, I've always been of the mindset that if somebody out there has been able to do it, then there's no reason why you can't do it. And it really doesn't matter what your upbringing is, what your financial situation, none of that stuff really matters. It's all your mentality of how you approach things. And I realized that, you know, in my circles that I was working in at the time, um, what held a lot of people back was, was this, you know, their mind, they, they, no, I can't do that. No, you know, it was always like a, a, an excuse for things. And so, um, you know, I always felt like my success kind of hinged on my ability to help people to, to bring them up, you know, and, and to get them to understand things. So I, I've always had that love and that passion for, for teaching people. And I think yeah. that merger of, you know, obviously this is a creative field that we're in, but without the business side of things, it is near impossible to make a career out of any art form, whether you're a painter, a photographer, um, you know, even in music. I mean, yeah, you could be a great singer, great musician, and you can carve out some sort of a career for yourself, but it's very hard for you to have a long lasting career if you don't understand business, because there will always be people out there that will take advantage of you. Yeah. And, you know, and most of the time, what I see with creatives in general is that we invite people to take advantage of us because we see very little value in ourselves and what we produce. And so um, in seeing that, I like, I have a heart for people who, who think that way, like you're, you're better than that. Yeah. You know, you're stronger than that. You're worth more than that. And if I have to be that person to, to deliver that message, I'll, I'll do what I can. <laughs> So is this starting the evolution of your portrait uh, career here? Yeah, man, look at that sharpness and that detail, man. I'm, I'm, I, I, I clearly do not know how to get a photo in focus at this point. Um, but, you know, at the time I looked at it and I said, wow, man, this is, this is great. Like this is where, this is where I wanted to be. And so we, we uh, figured out the flash to some extent uh, enough to be able to, um, you know, get some, get some decent looking pictures, uh, got him posing and everything. I think you could probably see the reflection of the modifier in the lens there. Right. So I might've yeah. been using like an Octa or an umbrella or something like that. Yeah. You can definitely make out uh, so something right there. Yeah. It looks like, yeah. It's so like, I was just trying to figure things out and, um, you know, uh, yeah, that was, that was it. Like I took that photo and in my mind, I was just like, this is what I see in the magazines. I have achieved it. <laughs> you know, and little, little did I know like how incredibly difficult it would be from this day forward. <laughs> it is not as kept, easy as it was for this shoot. Pushing yourself, you know, and you, and that's, so you're developing a style and now that you're really kind of growing as an artist and, and saying, where, how is your evolution of like, I'm going to keep pushing myself. Is it uh, just by practicing every day and like saying, I'm going to break out modifiers and, and I'm going to try new things every day. Are you now breaking out books and looking at other photographers? Are you trying to now find videos or where, where are you kind of pulling all of this, uh, you know, knowledge from and, and practicality? everywhere everywhere i'm looking at photographs that inspire me and uh trying to reverse engineer them i look at uh youtube videos like crazy and i see what my peers are doing um you know i go to uh competitions you know and and either judge or participate in the competitions to be able to gain knowledge that way um <clears throat> you know i get it from everywhere i read books yeah um so anywhere and everywhere but the the big kind of key thing is not how much uh, information you ingest, but how much of that do you actually turn around and practice and try out? Uh, there's been a lot of things where, you know, I, I looked at it and on, on its face, I'm like, eh, I don't think that's going to work. You try it out and all of a sudden you're like, oh, wow, this actually works really well. Um, so that's kind of been the key thing. And as I've taught photography over the years, that's been kind of my overarching message is like, Okay, so you, you may have learned one or two things. That's great. You need to put it into effect as soon as possible. Start doing some photo shoots for yourself. Figure these things out because if you don't, it's going to be a vapor in the wind. You're going to forget. You're going to have to come back, you know, relearn all these things over again. And so like this photograph, this was uh, my friend Ian. He also used to work with me at, uh, at Sprint. And, um, you know, he's, he's a rapper and uh, he was going to compete 
or go to this thing. It was called the ozone or something to that effect. And so this was one of my first, what I would call creative portraits. Um, because in my mind, when he said ozone, I was like, okay, I don't want to just take regular portraits of you. Like I was thinking ozone, like nuclear fallout, gas mask. So I, I went on Amazon, bought this like Israeli gas mask. And, uh, and I was like, you know, we're going to do something like real, like moody, real, like, um, creative, you know, it wasn't yeah. just going to be the typical, very well lit portraits. And, uh, again, at the time I didn't know that much about lighting, but, uh, but I started tinkering and this is one of the, you know, early photos that I took at the time where I was just like, oh, this is cool. Like, this is where I want to be. And, and I really, um, loved, you know, the result that I got at that time. Uh, and we had several photo shoots like that. You know, it was a good friend that anytime I would get new gear, he'd come over and we'd set up a new shoot and take more creative pictures. And it allowed me the opportunity to kind of learn the ins and outs. Yeah. At this point, are you uh, taking notice of other photographers? Are you get, be befriending, uh, taking on like a, maybe a mentor, kind of like, you know, looking up to someone and, and, and trailing anybody? What, where, where are you at, you know, in the community of photography at this point? Yeah. Um, so at that point in time, I think... Uh, uh, I was going to like different workshops. And so at that time, right around that time, I went to a Scott Kelby workshop that he yeah. had in Tampa. Um, I traveled to Atlanta for a WPPI road show where I met uh, Lindsay Adler for the first time, uh, Doug Gordon, who at the time, you know, was an amazing instructor. I um, can't remember who else was there. Uh, but there was a bunch of like really great photographers that I followed, uh, Aaron Nace from, from Flern, um, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and so I, I would go to these workshops, you know, that were local, uh, or semi-local to me here in Florida and, um, you know, learn things and then go back home and test and say, okay, well, what, like I could do it the way that they were showing me, but I kind of like it this way instead. And so I would make my own little modifications to the things that I learned from them. Yeah. And, um, you know, eventually it just got to the point to where I was like, okay, I took a little bit from here, a little bit from there and blend it all together and, and kind of uh, settled into a style that was able to be created over and over and over consistently. Yeah. yeah. Uh, at, at these first couple of workshops and, and stuff that you're attending, are you looking up on that stage and already feeling like I'm going to be up there or was that sort of a foreign kind of thing? Like, wow, I am actually going to be up there and in, in several years, I'm going to be teaching those. No, it wasn't even a thought in my mind. Um, you know, at the time, I really was just thinking that uh, I would just pursue this as a business. And, you know, if I could help out friends or, or people that were in my, you know, close circle to help them if they wanted to be photographers, that would be cool. Um, but never really thought at all that I would ever be standing up there with them. Um, you know, I didn't think that was going to be in the cards for me. But uh, really, the opportunity came with a company called Savage that uh, yep. they, they uh, became my very first sponsor. I think this was 2013. So I've been doing it for a couple of years up to that point. And, um, and so they said, hey, we're gonna be at WPPI and uh, we're gonna have a little booth set up and we wanted to know if you would come and do a presentation using our gear. And I remember at the time, like I, I've been a member of Toastmasters at that point for about three or four years. Uh, which for those who don't know, Toastmasters is a public speaking and, and leadership organization. It's all over the world. And I've been a member. And uh, so I, I said to myself, yeah, that sounds cool. You know, I'll, I, I can teach what I know, uh, whatever it is that I know. And so, uh, so I went to WPPI and they gave me an opportunity to teach at their booth. And it was crazy because no one knew who I was. And I'm just standing there basically talking to one or two people. But I, I realized, okay, so as I wandered around the show floor and listened to other people talk, I realized that the way I was teaching things at that point in time was very, uh, very practical. It was very like, I wanted people to walk away and if they saw the photo that I just shot and they liked it, that they had every bit of information that they needed to go back and do it themselves. And I, that's how I learned. That's how I like to learn. And as I walked around the show floor and listened to different instructors, I realized that not everybody is doing that. And, and I didn't know if that was by design or not, but I just started to realize that a lot of instructors in the industry were not teaching the nitty gritty of how they do what they do. It's all very esoteric. It's all very big picture. You know, you walk away feeling good, but then you're like, but how did they do this though? 
and you, you never really get that information. And so um, I just wanted to do different. Yeah. I just wanted to be different about how I, how I approached it. And I noticed that there weren't people that were teaching it that way. And I said, well, maybe there are people like me that learn the way I learn where you actually have to sit there and say, this is why I chose this setting was because of this reason versus I'm not even going to tell you what my settings are. We'll just do this. And you stand there and you know, it's, it's all like, and, 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 you know, you don't think about it. So. I mean, it's, it's a very important thing is like, because one of the things, you know, I, having found photography for me and it took me, I did many careers, you know, and I've told the story several times, but uh, you know, I used to work in film and TV and then I opened up bars and restaurants and nightclubs and I did that for years and I just was never happy. I mean, I had highs and lows and uh, yeah, looking back, you know, owning some hot night spots in, in, in mm -hmm. South, you know, South beach, Miami and New York was, uh, there were some highlights, but there were a lot of dark periods and I didn't sure. wake up happy every day. But once I found photography, that was it. I mean, like, I can't tell you, from the day I started as a professional photographer to this day, I, I don't think there's a day that I've ever woken up like, I'm a photographer, this sucks. Right. I, I wake up happy every single day. Even if I have a bad client, I'm still having a great day and I'm on top of the world. And part of what I've done is wanted to give back like you do. And, uh, and I've studied, you know, I've, I've sat in on your, your workshops just because yes. I've seen how you have uh, progressed and the way you teach and your, and your calmness and your willing to give back. And it's a beautiful thing. And I think anyone that kind of wants to really do this, workshops are a great thing. I mean, even as a pro, we all, like, there are small nuggets that I got out of your, that changed my workflow at, at what I do. It's like, we can always learn from each other. And that's one of the greatest things I think. And it, we'll talk about Sony later, but Sony Kando brings such incredible people together that loot check their ego at the door and just are so excited to share with each other. And, and oh, this yeah. is every level of photographer from, you know, amateur to pro to, and you sit there like a giddy school kid, like what? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Sharing and it's unbelievable. It's you true. Know? So, uh, we go now into this evolution of your photography and we're, you know from seeing him you know with his little you know, <laughs> your first you know einstein shots you know, with the canon camera and that portrait, oh yeah going to now you're nailing uh, are you hiring are you has, has it all been like you know working with friends where do you where's that that evolution of now you know what i'm understanding composition color lighting like you've made a jump here yeah so this was after going to several workshops um that headpiece was one that I had seen in a magazine that was uh, uh, mine. My version was very different because I'm not a very crafty guy. <laughs> That's literally like I went to, I think, Joanne Fabrics or Michael's or one of these stores. I bought this like styrofoam bowl and I just started jabbing flowers into it. And so that's literally what she has on her head is like a styrofoam bowl. And I just started pinning flowers like all over. It's and, the end uh, picture that matters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it was just like, it looked, you know, in person, she laughed when I handed it to her. She's like, you want me to put this on my head? I'm like, but look at this picture. And I picked this like a uh, photo from uh, Harper's Bazaar or something like that. It was some famous model that had a very similar, but way better done uh, flower headpiece. And she's like, Oh, this looks cool. And so we started shooting and, uh, at this point in time, I was shooting everything wide open. And so you can kind of see here, you know, that very shallow depth of field look. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I've always had this uh, kind of fascination, for lack of a better word, shooting close up portraits. And I think this is where that transition really started to take hold that I love photographing faces very close up, very intimate, because I feel like those are the kind of portraits that speak to me. Uh, are those portraits where it's very close and you can see the person's eyes and, um, you know, really try to understand or maybe think you understand uh, who that person is. Yeah. With uh, new technology and stuff like that, you know, let's just take the, you know, the, the, the Sony a7R4. Now that you have this amazing amount of, you know, information in a photo, do you find yourself maybe like I'll back off a little bit. So if I want to in a picture, I can come in or not, or do you just like, I'm shooting to the crop and that's it. Yeah. You know, I shoot I, to the I, crop. I, yeah. Yeah. No, like nine times out of 10, I'm shooting it to the crop because in my mind, it's like, if I have a 60 some odd megapixel camera, I want to see a 60 some odd megapixel photo. <laughs> I don't want to crop into it and see 40 when I could have had 60. Cause in my mind, it's always like, what if, Yeah. you yeah. know? Um, so, but I, I think, a lot of that just comes with this uh, comfort level of knowing what I want and, and just kind of making that decision right then and there when I take that photograph. Uh, so there is that small percentage of the time where I'm not sure, you know, if this photo is going to end up going somewhere or doing something that 
would require a different composition and crop. And then in that case, I go a little wider. Uh, but for the most part, everything is in camera the way that I want it to be because I want to maximize that resolution. I want to get the most that I possibly can uh, out of that, you know, many thousands of dollar investment <laughs> that I made in that camera. So um, yeah, a crop in camera as much as possible. So now we're going to jump into this. Uh, where are you in your career now? I mean, I, suddenly I know that you, you uh, have done stuff with Adorama and it's like, well, so where are you at this point? Uh, are you still shooting? Uh, you know, are, are you getting bigger clients? Where are you? Yeah, so this is, uh, I'm still in my DSLR phase. Um, I've moved off of this idea of being a lone wolf and trying to figure out that, uh, you know, if I just do a bunch of workshops, I can figure things out. Um, and I really wanted to find a mentor. I wanted to find somebody whose work I looked up to uh, that could maybe give me that little extra bump that I would need to, to get better. And so uh, that person at the time was a photographer by the name of Joey Wright. Uh, who was here in Orlando, Florida, um, had amazing work. And he he does a lot of uh, like swimwear and, um, you know, lingerie, like things of that nature. And, uh, but I loved his eye. He had a very good eye for composition. He knew how to make people look beautiful. And, and I wanted to learn that. And so this photo shoot that we did here with Justine, um, you know, was, was a photo shoot where he came with me and, I asked him a million questions like, hey, we're going to do this photo shoot. I want you to be there to tell me how would you approach this shoot? What compositions are you, are you looking at as we're walking? Um, so we walked this uh, little area in Sanford, Florida that was uh, like a marina. And we basically just walked around and he's like, look, this spot right here, this is great. This is what I see. Um, and basically just set Justine up in that scene and and took a photo of her and um, that one day was just like a big, huge eye opener for me to be able to see through someone else's eyes, how they would approach different things, um, was, was very valuable. So yeah. that's kind of where I was in that phase. That was maybe two years before, uh, I switched to mirrorless and maybe two and a half years before I started doing things with, uh, Adorama TV. Uh, but it was in that mentorship phase where, you know, now I have somebody who, knows what they're doing, who can really kind of help to uh, sharpen my skills and, and to really close that gap. So how do you get from this point to, uh, is Adorama TV the next kind of jumping point in your career? Is that the next kind of uh, evolution or was there something in between now and, and Adorama? Yeah, I think, um, I, I think uh, the sponsorship with Sony came before it. Um, and I think that was probably the next big jumping off point because I know that uh, the relationship that I had with Adorama mainly came because of the relationship that I had with uh, Sony at the time. Um, you know, they they knew that uh, Sony was a growing brand at the time, and uh, most of the instructors that they had on Adorama TV at the time were not shooting Sony; they were shooting other brands. And so I was basically their, you know, Sony poster boy <laughs> uh, to to go in there and create content and only use Sony stuff, and. Um, so yeah, so that's that's kind of how the uh, Adorama TV stuff came about. How does they, how does Sony approach you, and how do, how does you know the, like I mean that's got to be you know uh, a big like a moment in your life like wow Sony has now actually come to me like yeah yeah you've had some other you know Savage as a sponsor but Sony yeah. is you know now you know really kind of changing some game at this point when they approach you what evolution on of, of the mirrorless are they on are they on the first generation of the A's yeah. or the A seven A seven A seven that was the the gateway drug. <laughs> uh, for me, you know, um, so it was kind of interesting. I I purchased the A7. I would say in October of 2014, and uh, primarily and you, I you bought switched it. to this on your own. You you switched yes. to Sony on your own. How did how did you come to that that? Because obviously, it, throughout your if you're a gamer and into cars and all this, you're into gear and stuff like that. So yeah. how how are you like coming to a, a, you know, what is it about uh, you know shooting? What were you shooting right prior to the to this the Sony? Yeah, so if you pull up the photograph of uh, Travis, it's the black and white photo that's in the, the looks like it's in a living room. It's got a big soft box in front of him. Oh, okay, let me pull um, that up. So, because it's very uh, crucial to, to this story. So what had happened was, um, at the time I was creating some video tutorials for Rangefinder Magazine and uh, some for Savage. I was toying with the YouTube thing. I wasn't super consistent, but I was creating uh, educational content. 
And on one specific day, um, I was trying to record this content and I had a 7D and I had my 5D Mark III, which was my primary camera that I would take, you know, my, my pictures. Um, and the 7D was the camera that we would use to shoot video. Well, on this particular day, I had a deadline to create this video for Rangefinder and he wasn't going to be able to make it. And so I needed to shoot this video. I had the photo shoot all set up. I'm like, crap, what am I going to do? So I went to Best Buy and I was like, I need a camera that basically I could shoot good video, like what you would see from a 7D. And, uh, but I needed to have autofocus. And so uh, they were like, well, um, take a look at the Sony a7. And the cool thing was at the time that you could use the lenses, you could just buy an adapter and you can utilize the lenses and stuff. But um, so I, I bought the a7 with a kit lens and filmed my video and you know, in my mind, it was going to be a video camera. Like that's all I was going to use it for was just to shoot video, uh, use it for the autofocus and, and just kind of call it a day. Well, on this particular day, I was doing a photo shoot and uh, this was something I was doing for PhotoFlex because I was sponsored by them at the time. And um, I did everything with the uh, 5D Mark III. And out of curiosity, I'm like, the A7 is full frame. I have the adapter could use the same lenses. I wonder what it looks like. Like I'm, I know it works fine for video, but let me see if, cause it was so much smaller. Um, you know, it had some benefits like being able to, to have the Wi-Fi built in where I can transfer photos to my phone. There were things about it that looked really interesting, yeah. but in my mind, I'm thinking, no, this isn't going to stack up to a 5D3. So, um, so I did a test. I'm like, I'm going to take pictures, same settings, same lighting, um, and, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my 5D Mark III with my 2470 uh, L series lens, the Mark II. And then I'm going to take my A7 with the kit lens, which, you know, was a $1,700 setup versus like a $5,000 setup. And, and I did this. I took the same picture side by side, same lighting, um, pretty, pretty similar settings. And obviously I had to tweak the colors in post a little bit to try to, you know, match them up uh, to where I would like it but I was blown away. I was like, how is it possible that uh, unless I looked at the file numbers, I really couldn't tell which was taken with which. Like if you just jumble these all up and put them on a table, I was like, I can't really tell the difference. The detail was, was there. Um, obviously the color is always something that you, when you're shooting raw, you're applying your own adjustments to it afterwards. Um, so, you know, it, it just got me down the road of just like, well, you mean I don't have to carry all this expensive equipment? Cool. All right. Let's, let's try this Sony thing out. It's so funny because I had a, a very s sort of similar uh, uh, evolution. I was obviously, I, I worked in film and TV and went to NYU film school and worked in, in um, on motion pictures. And when I was sort of kind of getting into photography, it was the, the rumor of the Canon 7D coming out. I'm like, oh, I can make movies on this and I'll be able to shoot some photos and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I bought the 7D. I never once used it for video, not once. Wow. I fell in love with photography and I bought, you know, some other Canon stuff. And it wasn't until the, the uh, Sony's, the full frames came out and I, la I sat there and that changed me. And I've always said that it was the Sony that, if it wasn't for those Sony cameras, I probably wouldn't be a photographer because it, it was the intrigue of not being that, that sure of myself as, as a photographer at that point where I could see exactly what was in the viewfinder and that was my picture and that made me right. more confident as a photographer and now I know the settings and stuff like that but that's the, what was my switch was because I wasn't confident yet and that mm -hmm. allowed me to do things that you know suddenly you know when you're first shooting people it's like oh that chimping check yeah. oh, one sec. let me check let me check with the Sony like I got it I, I can see it I got it and I got so confident that's when I started shooting more people and it was such a you know booster for me and that's why I you know went to Sony that's cool because I, I had the very same type of uh, experience when I switched over. Uh, it was kind of an interesting thing because many people who are models or who have worked with other photographers are used to seeing photographers do this look up, look down, yeah. look up, look down. And, um, you know, so for me, I wasn't doing that. I was, I was putting the preview in the, the viewfinder and uh, I see the photos that I just took pop up for like a split second and I knew they looked good and I just kept riding, taking shots. So, um, you know, it made people feel more confident in me because I was operating in a way that was very different than what they were expecting to see from other, you know, what they had seen from other photographers at that point. So now you're really kind of getting into shooting people. And, and I would assume at this point, 
wh where are you in your career? Are you getting hired for different things? What, what are you doing in the career? And uh, how much are you doing for, uh, you know, to, for YouTube? How much are you doing uh, in, in testing? How much are you doing for, you know, getting paid? Where, where are you at this point? Yeah, so these photos actually were from uh, still the DSLR days. Um, I, I would categorize these photos as being that moment where I realized that my success in order for me to be able to continue to grow in portrait photography, I needed to have a team of people around me. And that team had to be a good makeup artist, a good hairstylist um, that could really take some of the ideas that I had in my mind and actually put it on a person and allow me to photograph it. And so, you know, I, at the time went out and tried to find a hairstylist and a makeup artist uh, who were willing to work with somebody for free, uh, <laughs> you know, in exchange for, for good images. And, uh, and, and I was able to build that, build that up. And I realized that that was the next big push for me, you know, was like, being able to work with a team. And so this was one of my very first editorials that I ever uh, got published. Um, and, you know, this was one where we had a bunch of people, we had a wardrobe stylist, makeup artist, multiple hairstylists, you know, it was my first time trying to, to run a team, you know, and then it's in Orlando, so it's really hot. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, so like trying to corral the models and work with them and try to get them to understand what it is that I'm, I'm trying to go for. Um, and and are, are you are, loving this as a photographer, you know, having a full team and a, working with people and the interaction of the, of no, the not at all. Not I at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hated it. You know, you know what it is, is that, you know, it's one of those things where like a part of me is like, listen, I just want to do it all on my own. Cause if yeah. I fail, then I fail. But it, it's, it's so much more complicated to try to get people to do what they need to do. Um, you know, and, and, and I'm a pretty mellow guy, but like when I get upset, I get upset, you know? And so it's like, and I try to not have that side ever show itself, you know? Um, so yeah, it's like at, at that point in time, I, I realized though that I really need to work with people who are good at what they do, uh, to be able to take my work to the next level. And, you know, so that was my first, uh, editorial that ever got published in my mind, looking back, it wasn't great. Where was it published? Uh, it was, uh, what was the name of this magazine? Um, it was something like Elements Magazine oh, okay. or something like that. Yeah. Um, I, I can't even remember. Awaken, maybe. Um, yeah, so it was one of these vanity. So are you still someone that prefers, you know, much smaller, tighter crews that you've worked with and like, you know, one or two people and not these uh, grand sets or anything like that? Is that still sort of your, your modus operandi? Like, like that's where you're at, the most comfortable as a photographer? Yeah, I mean, that's where I prefer to be because yeah. I feel like we're, we're able to execute, uh, you know, uh, things much easier. But I've, I've had to work on projects with, with more people uh, involved. And, and, you know, the good thing for me is that that overarching thing of like, I like people and I like working with people uh, always operates, you know, at the forefront. So uh, it's never entirely difficult for me to corral people. You know, maybe I have to corral a few more people than usual, but um, you know, that, that kind of became it was like, okay, you can't be this lone wolf all the time. You have to work with people, uh, that can help you to, to take things up a notch, you know? And so has there been a shoot that you, you kind of finally walked on and said like, wow, I'm, I'm, I've arrived. Like this was, it was exciting. Like what's the biggest like moment you've had as a photographer? Like, like, I can't believe I'm actually here or getting paid for this. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, honestly, I would say it probably was, uh, the first time that I spoke at Adorama. You know, I, I, at the time was still very young. Yeah. Um, and what and year I, is that? This was uh, 2015, okay. I believe. Or no, late 2014, 2014, early 2015, somewhere yeah. in that time frame. Um, you know, I, I had uh, just done my first talk at WPPI. I just moved up to New Jersey from, from Orlando recently. And uh, so, you know, and I was still fairly new in the game. I mean, I'm only three years old in the, the world of photography at yeah, this point. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I, I kind of looked at it like, wow, you know, these, I'm doing what, you know, these people that I learned under, you know, what they were doing when, when I started in this and it was weird. It was, it was really weird. Um, and then as I started to continue to do these classes at Adorama, I realized that uh, the local audience in New York was, was loving it. And, um, and I started getting really big crowds that would show up and it was very weird and it was very scary. 
you know, because I was that like, oh going and changing because now suddenly like you're getting a, a fan base, people that follow you, people that right. recognize you. How is that changing you as a as an artist, as a person? It does it at all, or is it suddenly like, whoa, this is so different? Yeah, it, no, it definitely changes you because you say to yourself, you know, if you want to have longevity in this, you need to always evolve and you need to change and and figure out new ways to explain the same things that you've been, you know, saying and doing. So there's there's a lot of wrinkles to the game. And so as that kind of happened throughout the course of my career, I, it just pushed me to want to learn new things and, and to teach new things and um, just do better. 